I'm beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Hey, welcome to another episode. If you do enjoy this video, consider giving it a like, as it does help the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Last week, we went and hit people with some bees. This week, we're uh, gonna play some Mega Man. Game number 23, Mega Man 64. Released in 2001, it was developed and published by Capcom. This game was actually on the PlayStation years before and called Mega Man Legends, but it was eventually ported to the N64. Honestly, I didn't know there was a Mega Man game on the N64 before this challenge, but hey, it's Mega Man. It's gotta be good, right? Let's find out. The game has one mode, the single player story, so we'll beat that to beat this game. So the game opens up, there's a cutscene showing Mega Man in some ruins or something like that, and he grabs this large crystal which triggers a trap all Indiana Jones style. Surprisingly, the game has voice acting, although it's like super compressed, making it kind of hard to understand what they're saying. Okay, well, everything's all right here. Don't count your chickens yet. I'm picking something up on my screen. After the cutscene, the game drops you into play. You have to escape this ruined place, and the game teaches you how the controls work along the way. To start, we can only run, jump, and shoot the buster gun. Nothing too crazy, just occasional enemy every now and then. Apparently they're called Reaver bots. After a bit of wandering around, we lose contact with the girl we've been talking to, who's named Roll, by the way. And you know what that means, boss time. So the first boss is this giant Reaver bot. It's nothing too wild. You're in this square room and it slowly walks towards you and it swings its arm at you. It's pretty easy, but the tutorial boss should be easy, right? Just running away and shooting when you're far enough away makes the quick work of this dude. With the boss dead, the game pulls a fast one on us. It's not actually dead! There's like some cutscene with Mega Man getting ambushed by the boss again and somehow jumps off the tower onto an airship. And they fly off into the sunset. Just when things were starting to look up, the ship malfunctions and they need to make an emergency landing. So the crew makes a crash landing on a nearby island, Catalox Island. Mega Man along with Roll, Barrel, and a dancing monkey are stuck here until they can fix the ship. A police officer shows up to investigate the crash, then we're off to explore. So yeah, along with all the dungeon exploring and stuff, this game's also kind of like an RPG in a way. Way different than any of the Mega Man games on the NES or the SNES. Wandering around open areas, cutscenes, lots of NPCs to talk to, this is so different from that old formula they've had from Mega Man games. So I made my way to the Apple Market where all the stores on the island are. We learned that if we want a part to help fix the ship, the junk shop's probably the way to go. So getting into the junk shop, there's some lady there who says her husband is out on a dig and he hasn't come back in a long time. She thinks we should investigate. Hey, sounds like a quest. There's like this ruins thing we can enter just outside the market, so down we go. There's a man yelling that he needs help as soon as we enter. This place looks just like the one from the start of the game. Same style of ruins and there's reaver bots all over the place. A few screens in and yeah, there he is, the owner of the junk shop. After killing the reaver bots next to him, we can talk to him and send him back to the shop. So back to the junk shop we go and they thank us for saving him and give us a mine parts kit and say we can have their car they use for supporting digs in the ruins. Also, for some reason, he asks us what our name is and we can either say Mega Man or <laughs> Hippopotamus. Like... Who's not going to pick Hippopotamus? I think there's not really any consequences for picking it. I don't know, the devs were just having fun there or something. It's, it's so random. Before continuing the story, I decided to go back in that ruins and explore some more. I ended up finding Rapid Fire, which is my first buster part. Basically, you can get buster parts that upgrade Mega Man's abilities in some way. This one allows you to fire more shots from the buster before recharging, as you might expect. So now we go talk to Roll and she is stoked that we have access to this support car. We can now upgrade our weapons and equip special weapons. The junk store owner gave us one that let us lay mines, so we can use that for now. After we learn about special weapons, that cop shows back up and informs us the city's being evacuated because they expect there to be a pirate invasion. Looks like it's up to us to investigate and figure out what's going on. So when we go further into the city, it plays a cutscene showing some girl talking to these Lego robot looking dudes. I don't know what they're supposed to be, but it's pretty random. Immediately after that cutscene, I learned how brutal the citizens of this island are. <laughs> Come on! 
<laughs> Some dude just ran over me with his truck, like, not even honking his horn, nothing. He just, just drove off. So now we go to City Hall to check up on Professor Beryl and meet the mayor, Amelia. Apparently she and Beryl were old friends, and we learn that there's some legendary treasure buried on the island, and that's what the pirates are coming to try to get. After leaving City Hall, we see that girl from before being chased by a dog. Guess we should go see what's going on with that. I actually spent like over 20 minutes trying to figure out what to do here, cause the game makes it seem like you have to investigate the girl and the dog, but nothing was happening. Turns out you had to talk to the girl and then the dog, or else it wouldn't initiate the next part of the story. Really annoying when games do that kind of thing. Anyway, we get the dog away from her and she just runs off. So we go back to Roll to let her know about Beryl, and then it begins. The pirates start invading, and it's up to Mega Man to stop them. So then we go to the heart of the city, and yeah, there's the pirates. And in an insane plot twist that no one saw coming, those Lego servbot things are the pirates. So this battle has three big robots that we must defeat. A red, a yellow, and a blue one. At the start, they're all just sitting there, and you shoot them while they shoot at you. Nothing crazy. After a few hits on them, the serve bots freak out, and they split up. Then you have to run around the city going after each one. I think they're supposed to, like, each have different properties, but I couldn't really tell, other than the yellow one had more health. Occasionally, the serve bots will open the top of the robot and throw a bomb at you, but it's really easy to dodge. Eventually, I took down the yellow bot, and doing this caused the serve bot inside to fall out, and I picked up some device, and it said I beat the mission. I thought I'd have to kill all three, but uh, hey, I'll take it. So after that battle, we learned that girl who was being chased by the dog is named Tron, and she's part of the pirates too. From how she talks, it sounds like she has a crush on Mega Man. Whenever I think about him, I get this funny feeling. But she decides to try to kill him anyway. Time for a follow-up boss battle. This fight's against a giant four-legged spider-looking robot thing. Its attacks are much larger area than the other bots, but luckily for us, this one stays completely stationary the entire fight. It has a few attacks, it can have like two of its legs come together and send a large wave of fire at you, it can shoot some projectiles from the middle, or it spins around and sends out a super rapid fire projectile wave. This boss, it was kind of fun, man. It was cool to dodge its attacks. Luckily, I made it out with barely any health to spare. So Tron gets launched out of the exploding robot and tells Mega Man she's mad or whatever and then flies away in an airship. It shows some news reporter saying that there's robots attacking City Hall. And guess what? Mega Man has to come stop them because it seems like no one else on this island can do anything. So this time we're in the area of town where City Hall is and there's tons of small robots moving around all over the place. We just have to keep blowing all of them up and protect the various buildings around but especially City Hall. There's not much risk in terms of dying because the robots are more concerned with blowing up all the buildings rather than you. And yeah, this part's honestly a little boring, but after killing all the robots, a big one shows up. This thing flies around and can either shoot a barrage of missiles at you or clap its hands together to try to crush you. It also has a weird thing it does where it sticks out what I guess is its tongue at you? I don't know, this attack's weird. Most of these are pretty easy to dodge, and I took this one down without too much trouble. The boss fight's definitely there the highlight of this game. So then there's some cutscene where some new character with giant white hair is introduced. I guess he's like the leader of the pirates or something. He turns on the TV to see the news broadcast that we stopped the pirates attack and he is livid. He kinda looks like the shocked Pikachu meme, honestly. So after saving the entire city single-handedly, the mayor thanks us by giving us a digger's license. This allows us to access more of those ruins to explore. The celebration is short-lived for Mega Man, however. Apparently the pirates are trying to infiltrate some ruins in the local forest where they think the treasure is. Yes, Mega Man has to solve everyone's problems yet again. This part has a bunch of smaller tank robots that can be taken down without any trouble. Each time you kill one, a serve bot pops out that you can shoot to knock it out. I'm not really sure if that achieves anything, although it does feel good to shoot those things. They're real annoying. This easiness is ripped away from us though because we quickly run into the next boss and man, this one is a doozy. That white haired dude from earlier brought this huge excavator robot thing to dig around the ruins, but he decides to try to kill Mega Man instead. The fight takes place in this huge hole that was dug out, and the only thing you can do to start is shoot the treads on it to slow it down. There's also a few smaller tanks around the area that shoot you, but the boss is the main thing to worry about. It moves around the area and just touching you knocks you back and deals massive damage. It can also shoot a pulse of energy and drop bombs on you. This boss was rough. 
a, a giant step up in difficulty. After my first death, I realized you have to do the run back through the forest and watch the cutscene again every time you want to fight it. Kind of annoying, honestly. It reminds me of Dark Souls. And with me dying so many times, that run back just hurts so much more. Finally, after a few attempts, I managed to destroy the treads. After that, the boss is way slower and you can actually move around safely. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Destroying the treads actually isn't even required. It just helps out. To actually damage the boss, you need to climb up the side of the rocks and wait for the door on its head to open. Shooting inside the door deals a very small amount of damage. You can get a lot of hits off on it if you jump on top, however this is no good because the robot's arm will knock you off and absolutely annihilate you. Unlike my 6 billionth run, I managed to do this. He's losing it. What are you standing around for? Put out the fire! Put it out! The automated fire extinguishers aren't working! What? But, 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 it's inconceivable! How could a little punk like that ever defeat me? Oh, thank God. That was frustrating. Apparently, once you get its health so low, it grabs its head in frustration and finishes itself off. The game had been pretty easy up to this point, but this boss showed me that this wouldn't always be the case. So after saving everyone once again, the mayor thanks us by giving us a Class A license. This allows us access to any dig site we want. She then asks if we could donate anything valuable we find to restoring the city, but come on, I've already saved y'all like all the time. I'm taking those finds straight to Pawn Stars, baby. I'm not actually sure if repairing the buildings actually achieves anything other than making them look nice again. With the town finally in a stable state, we're now able to explore the entire place. There was this place I found that ran a game show, and there were two different shows you could take part in. The first, uh, well, it had Mega Man continuously kick a ball at a dog. I don't know, dude, what do these devs have against dogs? You get a point for kicking the ball at the dog, but you can also kick the flashing dog that runs by for two points. And every five kicks, you can kick a dog into the other dog to get two points. Dude, what is this mini game? <laughs> Why did they make this? Anyway, there are D, C, B, and A ranks you can achieve, and you get a prize for the A rank. For this mini game, you receive a Zet Saber for getting A rank. The other minigame has you in a small room with a bunch of balloons. All you have to do is shoot the red balloons and avoid the blue ones. Much more wholesome than kicking a dog into another dog. It was actually pretty tough to get A rank on this one, but for doing it, you get a mystic orb. This dog kicking minigame unfortunately ended up being an amazing way to farm Zenny, which is what they call the currency in this world. I farmed up enough Zenny to pay off all the expenses the town needed for repairs, then I was on my way. I decided I'd stop by that junk shop from earlier and they had some amazing stuff. You could permanently increase your life gauge or buy a flak jacket which reduced all damage to you by 25%. They also had a lot of buster upgrades here too. I couldn't pass up on these items so uh... I went back to kick more dogs. Look, it is just objectively the best money making method in the game. I don't want to hurt the dog, it's just... it's efficient. After a bit more practice, I realized you can kick the regular balls away and not have a penalty. This allows you to get more of the dogs, which are worth double points, and I got a score of 20. This allowed me to input my initials for a high score, and that's when I realized the high score for that game was 25. That seemed absolutely unreachable, but I really wanted to get it. Plus, I had to farm a lot of Zenny anyway. After getting the enough Zenny for the flak jacket, the store introduced a new Kevlar jacket which reduced all damage by 50%. However, it was insanely expensive. I couldn't go without such a great item, so I, I went back. So then, after an even more farming, I had enough for the Kevlar jacket. And yep, you guessed it. They now showed me the Kevlar jacket Omega, which reduced all damage by 75%. I needed this thing. However, it was four times as expensive as the previous one. It would require around an hour or so of farming Zenny, so yep. I went back and did it. I found another new strat for this game where if you kicked extremely early, the ball would go at an angle to the right, which allowed you to get even more hits in. Oh! The tech! The 22! 
This got me a new high score of 22, which was second place on the leaderboard, but still pretty far off 25. Unfortunately, I never did actually reach 25. I imagine it would require the absolute perfect game, but kicking the ball sideways felt like a one or two frame trick. So finally I had enough to buy the Kevlar Vest Omega, and thankfully there was no thing that reduced all damage by 100%. I also purchased all the other upgrades they had in the shop. Mega Man was now absolutely stacked. I had buster upgrades to greatly increase my buster strength as well as firing range. All this new expensive stuff Mega Man had really got to his head. I mean, look how he treated this poor painter. Something's missing. What do you think I should add? Did you just say? <laughs> Did you just say what I think you said? Could you repeat that? <laughs> That's what I thought. Never mind that. So anyway, progressing the story now, we go to this cave where a woman is afraid of a tank and runs off. Turns out it's those dang pirates again. Now Roll is here with us in the support vehicle. It's crazy how much faster I've let these tanks with the increased power. Looks like Roll's letting the money get to her head too, cause she just completely runs over this gate blocking off the ruins, like, didn't even try to open it. Come on Roll, we have to pay for that stuff. I'm gonna ram it, Mega Man! Oh my god! She's losing it, dude, she's nuts! never mess with her. So down into a new ruins we go. Our goal here is to grab this giant refractor crystal to power our airship. Unfortunately for us it's locked behind three starter keys so off we go to find them. This time in the ruins I have 75% damage reduction so I'm basically invincible. It was kind of nice not really having to worry about attacks from the regular enemies. To be honest these ruins you explore aren't all that interesting like it's nice to explore and find new items and stuff but they get really repetitive. There's not really much anything as far as puzzles go and killing the regular enemies starts to get pretty tedious. So anyway, after running around a lot, I got the three keys and witnessed Mega Man grabbing the refractor crystal in the most awkward way possible. With the refractor shard in our possession, we can set off on our next goal, reaching the ruins in the ocean. See, there's a boat in the town that we can use to access it, but it's currently out of commission. Luckily, all it needs is a refractor shard to fix it. So after setting sail out on the ocean, guess who shows up? It's those pesky pirates with all their big robots. How do they have money to build all of these if Mega Man keeps destroying them? Like, why do they need this treasure? They seem to be loaded rich. Anyway, Mega Man's defending the ship from the top. Basically, you just shoot all the robots in the water and try to prevent the ship from taking damage. It's kind of an annoying section because it's basically just a really long auto scroll. After this super long section, the pirate leaders show up and they're ready to fight. This time, they've got a giant water robot and it means business. What's annoying about this boss is you start with the health you had remaining after the long section just before it. It starts with you just circling the ship while it shoots missiles, and after like 30 seconds of that, Roll moves the boat down a river, and the pirate robot starts chasing you. Somehow it's completely under the water despite how tall it is and how there's no way the river's that deep. But whatever, it's a video game, not real life. You get chased by the bot into another open water area, then the fight really begins. Roll continuously circles their robot while you have to shoot its arms and the guns on the back. With low health from the earlier section, this fight is just frustrating. You can die in just a few hits if you didn't do well before, and each time you die you have to repeat that long auto scroll section all over again. It's like 5 minutes to make it back to the fight. After getting wrecked over and over again, I discovered a big flaw in my approach. Basically none of my shots were hitting because I didn't have the longest range upgrade equipped on my buster. So after changing the upgrades up a bit, I was doing a lot better than earlier with the part and I was able to start the fight over with half health. I was on a good run destroying both arms and weapons on the ship with half my health still intact. The boss switches to like a last resort type thing where a giant laser beam appears on its back. It starts shooting some green pulse of energy towards you and you basically can't dodge it. However, shooting the laser interrupts the attack. It was coming down to the wire with me taking way too many hits from the energy and then... 
I was able to survive the fight. Probably the most annoying fight of the game, just because how much you have to go through just to get another attempt at it. So yeah, after that fight, we're in another ruins, which means more running around and killing regular enemies. After 10 years of running, I ran into the big prize, another refraction crystal. Mega Man awkwardly grabs it, but this time he's not so lucky. There's a huge boss waiting for us outside. This boss fight was pretty enjoyable. It moves around really slowly, but it'll sometimes dive at you at a really high speed. Then it can jump and send out a pulse of energy that you have to jump over. It dealt so much damage, and when I remember that I'm blocking 75% of all damage, like, how hard would this game be without that vest? With my health nearing the bottom, I delivered the finishing blow to this spot and made my escape. So with that refractor crystal, we can finally power the airship again. This gives us access to the main ruins, which is where the pirates have been trying to go all along. However, all we find inside is a computer saying we either need a password or three separate ID cards. Since we don't know the password, guess we gotta find those cards. They're scattered throughout the lower level of this ruin, so time to run around. Okay, enough of that, let's throw them in this computer. It like shows a cutscene where the main gate lifts out of the ground, which is the ruins no one's ever been able to access. Guess we can get in now, hey? There was also this boss fight against the pirates where you have to fight their airship, but it wasn't all that interesting. So now we can go in the main gate, which is another one of those ruins things. More running around, yay! Basically when we get to the end here, we're able to unlock the sub-cities. Those three living quarters where we can find the three ID cards. They apparently open up in places throughout the island. After some wandering around these ruins, I ended up finding an alternate exit, which led me to the power plant for the city. And you'll never guess who was in a warehouse where I came out. Yep, it was the pirates. And they've somehow gotten this gigantic robot inside of a warehouse in the city. Boss time again. This boss isn't too special, it moves around really slowly and it shoots energy and can launch bombs at you. Not too hard to dodge its attacks, but it has way too much HP. Fortunately for us, we've got this amazing missile launcher as a special weapon which just deals so much damage. Dude, get destroyed! Oh my god, that DPS. After kicking these guys' butts for like the fifth time, they start acting all weird and they're like, happy Mega Man is stopping them. Seems like they've never had trouble before and, I don't know, maybe they enjoy it or something. It was a weird cutscene. You know, I've been in this business a long time, but this is the first time anyone's ever given me this much trouble. Yet, it feels good somehow being beaten by you like this. With the pirates hopefully out of our hair, our next goal is to get those three ID cards. It doesn't really give you hints where these living quarters popped up at, but thankfully the island isn't too big, so there's not too much to explore. The first one I found was next to the game show place. There's this huge centipede robot thing guarding it. Basically, you just shoot it in the butt when it opens the flap to send some enemies at you. Pretty easy boss. The second one was in the main area of town near the houses. This one didn't even have a boss inside, just some regular enemies, so uh, pretty much a free ID card for us. Then the final one was near the power plant. Again, no boss here. So now we had all three ID cards. So only one thing left for us to do. Take the ID cards back to that main gate and use them, because we're about to get our amazing treasure, right? Well, uh, instead we like get a person's head attached to some kind of robot. They start giving us some big spiel about how they're thankful for us releasing them and now they can fulfill their plan and some ominous pipe organ music starts playing. Uh oh. I think this whole treasure thing was actually someone in the past making up a story to get people to revive this dude so they can destroy the world. My suspicions were confirmed when they deployed something that electrocuted Mega Man and then they ran off. Thankfully, the pirates followed us in here to try to snag the treasure, and they actually helped us out of that mess. Time to take on the final boss. Apparently their name is Mega Man Juno. I'm not really up to date on Mega Man lore, but all I know is I'm the one and only Mega Man here. This boss, it's honestly awesome. It flies around really fast, so you've always got to reposition yourself. It has a few different attacks where its arms send a giant laser at you, but it's always able to be dodged. Then it also jumps towards you and sends out a pulse of energy when it lands, which you can also dodge that. Honestly, fighting this boss reminded me a lot of fighting bosses in Dark Souls. Like, you can dodge all of the attacks if you know the patterns, but it's not easy to do at all. I love when the final boss is actually difficult. Like, I wish more games did that. On my second attempt, I managed to take all of its health down with just a little bit left. Felt like it lasted a bit too short. Oh, well yeah, the head survived and moved into an even bigger robot. 
time for phase 2. The second phase is much faster and likes to jump a lot more. However, since it doesn't send out an energy pulse when it lands from a jump, these are actually a bit easier to deal with. It feels like phase 2 is actually easier than phase 1, and once you get it past half health it goes into like a last resort mode where it can do this crazy attack that sends out a giant pulse of energy and has laser beams drop on you from above. If you just keep running this attack's useless. The fight was lasting a long time and I was nearly done. I made a critical error at the last second though that caused my HP to drop all the way down. Or so I thought. I must have had one HP left or something cause BAM! Boss dead! No! <clears throat> Please don't have a third phase. And no phase 3. One of my most clutch boss kills I've ever had. It was sick. It shows a cutscene showing the plans of Mega Man Juno being stopped, then that dancing monkey comes in and reveals they're actually more than just a dancing monkey. Apparently they're like storing data for some Mega Man corporation or something? I don't know, like I said, I don't know the Mega Man lore, so this is all weird. We say goodbye to everyone on the island one last time and then we fly off into the sunset. And then the credits roll game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating Mega Man 64. I didn't know there was a Mega Man on the 64 before this challenge, but now I'm kind of glad I played through it. The game, it had both good and bad things to it. All the different buster power-ups you could get, and the combat itself was really cool. It's mostly the boss fights, that was definitely the best part, and especially the final boss. However, all the wandering around on the overworld and like the repetitiveness of the ruins you explore made it drag on longer than it needed to. It was just kind of average, you know. I gave it a 5 out of 10 for enjoyability, it had good and bad things. And a 6 out of 10 for difficulty because some of the bosses were pretty rough. But yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy the video, consider giving it a like as it does help the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. But thanks for watching, I appreciate it. And here's a sneak peek at what is coming next. 285 games on the list. Maybe today's the day we draw Yoshi's story. But uh, we'll see what we get. 3, 2, 1... 273! We are playing... Wii Tricks. What the heck is that?